Hi guys, welcome to Miniature Fairy Tales. My name is Carissa and today I'm going to show you how to make these 124 scale windows and doors. These are my design files for these pieces uh, and you can see the measurements here if you would like to give this sort of thing a go yourself. The blue represents the acetate for the um, inside of the windows. Um, on the door you could use another piece of acetate for the window there or you could also um, use a uh, solid backing. The choice is entirely up to you. In this case though today we're going to use an acetate backing to simulate a window. And I have to apologize to you for my lovely croaky voice. Uh, I have a bit of a cold at the moment but um, hopefully that won't stop me making this video today. Uh, so in front of me here you can see I have quite a few pieces and please don't panic. Uh, this is for a um, special order that I was completing for a customer but I wanted to take uh, the, I wanted to take um, a portion of this to show you so this is for six sets of these windows and doors but I'm just going to show you one today um, but I'm just lining them up here so that you can see all of the pieces to the designs and I'm going to go through them with you shortly okay so here's a completed door and for this piece you're going to need acetate and the pieces I'm pointing to now. So the door pieces are all on the left hand side of the screen. And the window pieces are all on the right hand side. So you're going to need acetate, obviously the inner window piece and the frame parts. That's it, that's everything. Let's get started. Okay, now step one, we're going to need to use these thicker frame parts and we're going to use five of these pieces for one door frame. So um, we'll just count them out there, five of those. Next I'm looking for the um, thinner frame part for the front, I just want one of those. The next piece that I want is the actual door. I want two of those. And then I want this layered part and I want one of those for the front of the door. And now I'm just going through my acetate. I've got two different sizes here. So I'm about to show you the large size and the small size. The large size is for the window and the smaller size is for the door. So we want one piece of the smaller size. And now we're gonna put those aside and the next part that we want is the small square for the front of the door. But of course in my infinite wisdom, I didn't show you that till later, which doesn't make much sense, but that's the way it happened. So onward with the windows. Okay, for the main frame part, we are going to want four pieces of frame. And then we're going to want one decorative piece for the front of the frame. And that's just a smaller version of that frame. A thinner version. Then for our actual window panes, we're going to want two pieces of those. And of course we're going to want a large piece of acetate out of the two sizes. one of those and that's it for the window so we'll pop that aside now 
and there's the little ones they're for on the door so do take one of those and pop that with your door Now I'm going through my stash of goodies to try and find what will become the door handle for the door. And while searching, I came across these little silver brads that I have. Um, so these are the brads. You can see them up close here. All I essentially do is just um, pull out each leg of the brad, make it nice and flat, and it becomes a nice handle for... The door now they are quite small so I use my tweezers to help open up those little legs of that brad and once I've got it opened I can then uh, turn it upside down and uh, use my ruler to help me flatten it out on my mat And once our brad is nice and flattened out, we can commence work on our door frame. So I'll bring all those parts back into uh, the camera frame here. And we'll pop them into their respective piles. So that we can go ahead and start the gluing process. So usually I start with the outer frame. And we'll be using tacky glue for this. Um, because of course we're working with Cricut craft board um, so tacky glue is my go-to for cardstock and board and any paper-based sort of a product so it's a very thin line of tacky glue around uh, the first frame and essentially we're going to glue these into pairs so I'll take the next piece of frame and I'm going to very carefully marry up the corners of each part of the frame and then press it down gently. Now as I'm doing this, I am feeling around the edges to feel for anything that might be uneven. You do have a little bit of leeway time with tacky glue, so it's at this point that you want to use your mat to line up the edge flush and make sure things are nice and neat and tidy. And once you're happy, you can then use your brayer and uh, give it a roll just to push out any excess glue. If you don't have a brayer, you can use any kind of a roller. Um, that's absolutely fine. And in fact, if you don't have any kind of a roller, use your fingers. That's fine too. Okay, so we're going to continue on with the next pair. So as you'll recall, there are five pieces here. So we'll have two pairs and one left over. Uh, we'll glue the next pair together and then we'll put those two pairs aside to dry and we'll work on that last frame and we'll use um, some layering techniques to give us the effects that we want on the frames and the doors. So the reason for so many layers on this particular frame is because we wanted to give it some thickness. So if we don't use enough layers, it's going to look too thin and perhaps not to scale. So we wanted to give it uh, a 3D element, obviously. So that's why we layer it up to give it more thickness and um, have it protrude more. So now that I have those two pairs glued, um, I'm going to pop them under my ruler just to make sure they stay nice and flat um, during the drying process. They don't need too much weight on them. 
and then I am going to grab the last frame and I'm also going to grab the smaller uh, frame part and uh, again it's going to be a nice thin layer of glue on the smaller part and we'll glue that directly onto the top of the larger frame and as I mentioned earlier that's going to give us um, a bit more depth but also it's going to look like there are um, grooves in in the frame like it has been carved out that way or built that way so we're just applying that small thin layer of glue now and we'll pop that straight onto the larger frame now when we do this obviously as we did with the other frames we're going to line up the corners but this piece is a little more flimsy so you may get it trying to bend out of shape so it's just gently placing it on and then using your mat to push down and push the edges of that thinner part in in case when you laid it down it bent and it stuck out a little bit this will help that to line it all up again and then when you're happy use your brayer and roll that one out also and then that can also be sat aside to dry and you'll see here I definitely used a gentle hand with this particular piece just because that small thinner bit is very easy to rip at this stage so um, do be gentle with your brayer and do be gentle um, when you're pushing it down okay next up we are going to work on the actual door part so we have two pieces here and we will be using both of these with a piece of acetate um, to make a door with a window so I find for my acetate I prefer to use gem glue I find that gem glue works really really well on plastics and metals so I'll also be using gem glue for the brad handle um, so whenever we're gluing with um, the acetate usually I would use gem glue very occasionally I'll forget and use tacky glue but for the most part the parts that we'll be showing um, around uh, you know the window part that might seep through and need cleaned up um, I definitely suggest using gem glue for that so you can see here I'm just putting a thin layer of gem glue around the acetate and probably a good thing because acetate's very very hard to see in this video and uh, also the white material that I'm using is also quite difficult to see so I apologize for that um, but hopefully you can pick up enough from um, what you can see to be able to implement this project yourself if you'd like to so there's that nice thin layer of glue on the acetate and I'll just be adding that to um, whatever is the rougher side of, um, of the door cut out. You know, sometimes the Cricut will leave one side a bit rougher than the other. So I'm gluing the acetate to whichever is the rougher side. And uh, that way, when my door shows, it'll be the nice side showing. So I gently pop that down onto the door and um, once that gem glue dries um, it dries clear so you can't see it but if you do get a bit of um, push through which you will because uh, it's quite a thin glue just use a toothpick or a skewer as I'm doing here and clear away any excess and then later once it dries you can um, you can sometimes use a little bit of uh, alcohol or hand sanitizer and that can help to lift it um, but do be aware it can cloud your windows so that's why I suggest getting rid of the wet glue at this stage it's a lot easier to get rid of it now than later now for the other side of the door I've switched to tacky glue because I am not gluing directly onto the acetate this time I'm just gluing the rest of the door around it so um, I use my little thin nozzle and I cover all the bits where 
um, I know that the other side of the door will attach. And I didn't actually realize it until I was making or editing this video, but I must have forgotten and used the tacky glue on those inner panels of those window frames. I should have used gem glue in here, but obviously I've gotten carried away in the moment and just carried on with my tacky glue. Look, at the end of the day, it, it's not going to matter. Tacky glue dries clear also, but when you're dealing with acetate, it's just not as good. So look, if you only have tacky glue, it's still perfectly okay. So now we're ready to join these two up. So you've got your acetate facing to the top, and now this next piece is going to go straight over the top of that and the way I glue these together is I marry up those inner frames of the window and then I look at the corners the way you're going to be given away on the door is if the inner frames don't match up so that's where I lay my focus and then I go to the corners um, and this seems to work for me so I gently press these together because you must remember there are three layers here and one of them is acetate which is quite slippery so I gently press it and then I come in with my brayer afterwards just to make sure that everything is uh, pressed down accordingly it's important to give particular attention to the edges because of the three layers, uh, it makes the edges a little bit uneven. So do um, pay special attention to the edges of the door. And again, if you have any spillover from where you've joined up to the window, just go over that again with your toothpick and get rid of any excess that might have seeped out while you were putting these parts together. All right, so once you are happy with how that's sitting, you can go ahead and place your decorative piece for the front of the door. So again, this is another layering technique. Um, we're giving more shape to the door by adding this part. And it's re a really simple part, just a rectangle with a line in the middle. Uh, but it gives a bit more shape and a bit more depth to the door. Now, when I was designing this door, I did have an example to go off uh, that the customer had sent me she said I just want something that relatively looks like this so this is my design but I have incorporated some ideas from the example that she gave me so a light layer of tacky glue to the outer frame and of course that inner crossbar piece um, and then that can go straight on top of the door again marrying up your edges and your corners to make sure that everything lines up and then you can grab your brayer and pop that over the top to make sure that everything is pushed together nicely and any excess is removed again apologies for my blocked nose guys uh, I do have to pronounce my words very carefully in order for you to understand me and uh, Hopefully you can. Uh, it's all part of winter time and moving house and coming to a cooler climate. It all seems to have caught up on me. Okay, we're going to move on to this smaller square now. And this is another layering decorative piece. Be using tacky glue on the back here. And then we're going to pop that straight in the middle of the square at the bottom of the door and uh, that square is made by of course that uh, layered piece that we've just put on so uh, you don't have to measure it you can do this by eye pop it in there just till it looks centered and then um, you can set it aside to dry later but before you do there's one more thing we have to do with this door and that is we have to add our little brad handle so here it is and as always i'm just dry trialing first to make sure it's going to sit the way i want it to and then once i have an idea i am going to lay it out beside uh, the portion of the door that i want it to be stuck to and then i'm going to use my gem glue 
and I'm just going to um, add gem glue the length of the brad uh, that's why I've got it sitting next to the door so that I can see how long it is and then um, I will add that gem glue and then pop the brad straight on it'll take with the gem glue very quickly um, so you you do have a small amount of time to um, to clean up any excess uh, but aside from that you're all done you can set it aside to dry Okay, so we're going to move back to our frame portions now. Um, so of course we have um, the two pairs and then we have the front single frame with the decorative piece on it. So we're going to take the two pairs that don't have the decorative piece and we're going to glue them together um, in the same uh, way that we did last time. And uh, again, we're just adding more depth. So I like to glue my, um, when I'm doing excessive layering like this, I like to do it in pairs. Um, the reason for that is because um, there's less chance of warping, but also things do tend to get a little bit damp. So um, it's easier for everything to dry if you just do it in pairs and then marry up those pairs later. It's also easier to keep things nice and straight if you have less edges to worry about. Um, so um, I think here at the moment I'm just getting rid of a little bit of excess um, that I could see from the pairs. Um, so a little bit of excess where the edges didn't marry up as I wanted them to. Um, I'm straightening that up now so it doesn't become an issue for me later. Again, I'm dry trialing with my pairs to make sure that everything is going to marry up as I want it to. If I do see any anomalies here, this is my chance to get rid of them, just as I did with um, that last edge that wasn't lining up. But if I'm happy with it, I can go ahead and glue just like I did before. So sometimes you might see me when I'm laying things on the mat flush, you might see me give it a bit of a tilt uh, like I'm doing here. And my reasoning for this is because it lets me feel where my edges are when it's still wet with glue. Um, so I can feel when the edges aren't lined up and when they're lined up nice and flat. So it's just a way of me using my fingers to um, determine when things are lined up. And it's quite helpful when you're working in layers like this to not only use your sight but also use your, your sense of touch to be able to um, help you along. Okay, and now it's time to add that front decorative part of the frame. So again, same scenario, we're just going to add a little bit of tacky glue and pop that straight on the top. So I froze this portion of the video to show you what thickness we're at now. So it's probably about, I would say, 5 mil. And uh, so that's roughly, maybe a little bit less than 5 mil actually. But that's um, roughly uh, about the thickness we want for 124 scale. So at this point I've taken the door and I have just um, tried to fit it with the frame. So the measurements on this are pretty exact, but 
what can make it a little bit thicker is um, of course the layering if the layers are not absolutely exact then um, it might cause um, might cause some issues with popping the door back in so um, I always check it and if I do have issues if the doors too tight into the frame then I'll grab some sandpaper and I'll just sand the edges and then once I've done that I end up with a really well fitting door that can click in and out and I can even pose it open or closed if I want to. Alright so with the door complete we're now going to move on to the window and I'm sure as you can already imagine it's a very very similar process to what the door is. The only difference is we're going acetate between window frames and not door frames. Everything else is exactly the same. So we're going to start off with the window panes and I'm just holding the acetate over the first part of the window pane frame to make sure that it's going to sit right and of course again using my gem glue I am going to add a really fine layer to all of the parts that will be touching the acetate. Now my nozzle on my uh, gem glue bottle was a little bit wide so instead of using it straight from the bottle I've just um, dropped a little bit onto the frame and now I'm using a toothpick to spread that out further and that's so that I um, don't get too much squeezing out when I add the acetate um, because of course, you know, the less you have to clean up on acetate, the better. So um, if you do find that you're getting too much coming out, just try and spread it with a toothpick. It's far easier than cleaning up. And once you've got that spread out, you can add your piece of acetate on. Again, um, try and lay it down exactly where you want it because once it's down, you don't want to spread it. Uh, sorry, you don't want to move it because it will spread the glue that you've just um, laid down and it will show on the other side which you don't want so do be very careful about laying your acetate make sure it's exactly where you want it to be you can see here as I'm flattening it out I am getting some excess coming through again I'll turn that over and I'll clean that off with a toothpick um, while it's wet um, and that will allow me to um, get rid of that excess if you do miss some, don't worry, it does dry clear. Once that's been cleared off, you're fine to um, go ahead and add your gem glue to um, the next piece of window pane frame in the exact same fa fashion as you did before. And now adding that uh, window pane frame with the acetate down onto that freshly glued piece. And again, you're dropping it very carefully because um, that, for that same reason, you don't want the glue to spread over the acetate. And I just use my mat um, to make sure that it's all lined up. Again, just as I did with the door, I match up the inner frame pieces with my eye as I'm lowering it. And then um, I do the outside edges after that, probably more so because I just feel it's important for those inner pieces to line up because if they don't, that'll, that'll give you away straight away. So uh, do that and then um, of course clean up any excess. Now of course you'll recall that we have four frames for the window frame and we have one smaller decorative frame piece for the front of those. So in the same fashion as you did with the door frame, we're going to glue these in pairs and then we're going to add that smaller frame on at the end. So rather than bore you with the gluing process, I'm going to skip straight ahead to the last part. 
Okay, magically our frames are together and I'm just adding on that last decorative piece now. Now it is the exact same process as the door frame. Um, the door frame also had a thin piece, the window has a thin piece, so they kind of match up and you know what to do from here. So now of course we'll be able to uh, glue our two pairs together making the final frame and then we'll be able to add in our window panes and make sure that they fit into that frame. Now this one doesn't fit in quite as nicely as I would like it to. It's a little too snug so I am going to grab some sandpaper and um, give the edges a little going over. Um, it really doesn't take much um, in order for you to be able to get a comfortable fit again so please don't over sand. Just give it a little bit here and there on all the edges and then keep trying it into that frame until it fits comfortably. You can see here it fits on the frame nice and flush with the back and that's to add more depth to the front of the frame and have a little bit uh, more of an inset window. So I'm really happy with how this one has turned out now. So here are my two finished products and I'm really happy with them. Hopefully my customer is happy with them too. Now they are versatile as I mentioned before we can um, we can sit them closed or we can sit them open. So it's really up to your personal choice. If you would like more information on any of my designs or how I made these or anything else that you can see uh, on my YouTube channel, don't be afraid to contact me on my social media. You can find me on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I do have a Twitter, Twitter account, but I'm not too frequent on there uh, I also have my shop on Etsy so do feel free to join me on any of those platforms and ask me any questions that you might have about anything you might be designing you can find all of my contact details in the about section on my youtube channel do take care and thank you so much for joining me today stay well and I'll see you soon bye for now